Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and this video is titled, How to 3D Model Anything with 3D Studio Max. <laughs> and that's Morgan, that's my girlfriend. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, uh, I released a video about eight months ago now. Um, it's basically a, uh, it's a, it's a 3DS Max beginner crash course video. And what? it's about an hour long. And it basically runs down all of the, uh, it's a basic rundown of all of the, 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 the basic tools um, in, within 3D Studio Max and the interface. And we discuss, um, you know, various components for animating and rigging things. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a brief rundown of everything in about an hour. Uh, so I definitely recommend going to check that out um, prior to the, to the rest of this little series that I'm putting together. So like I said, this video is, uh, is, is um, is titled how to 3d model anything so we're going to be discussing some uh, some of the, the basic primitive shapes in max and the sort of philosophy of modeling uh, within an environment like 3d studio max um, and then we're going to be talking about the typical modifiers that you use to manipulate geometry um, while you're sort of modeling as an object or objects um, and we're going to be talking very briefly about like booleans and blob mesh and stuff like that, like a little bit more complex modeling techniques. And, uh, and then we're going to be modeling some stuff. Um, we'll probably put together a little architectural scene with, um, with like a, a chair, a table, maybe a, a beer bottle. Um, and uh, maybe we'll like at the very end of the video, we'll discuss some, some lighting techniques and very briefly set up a little rendered scene. Um, I, I plan to release a couple of videos, um, or at least one video uh, for like a, a beginner step-by-step uh, -step guide on, on how to light a scene and how properly render a scene. Um, so that's uh, that's coming up soon. So a lot of the videos that I've posted that I've been posting recently have been um, using TieFlow, which is like a sort of advanced like um, VFX plugin. Uh, it's a simulation plugin. Um, so I do a lot of work with that plugin in particular. Uh, so before you jump into VFX and like really advanced, you know, visual programming stuff, uh, it's really helpful to know the basics of how to model objects, how to model a thing, right? Because that's really what's going to make your work stand out is the the detail um, and the you know the small nuances of the particular scene um, that that really make it yours, you know. So your own artistic interpretation of of you know these particular objects that you're using in your scene. Uh, all that stuff is up to you, um, and of course you can buy, um, you know, 3D models and assets on marketplaces like TurboSquid or CG Trader or whatever, um, and use those in your animations. But it's really helpful to know how to modify those or how to make your own, um, and you'll save a lot of money doing that. Um, and of course, on top of that, it's also important to know how to model stuff if you ever do contract work. Um, if you do work for clients, obviously you're going to have to be modeling. Um, you know, custom custom assets for them. So all of these, uh, so we'll be covering a lot of the basic modeling techniques of stuff that I use every day. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So in the 3D Studio Max interface, in the beginning of Crash Course, we cover basically all of the major menus and components of the interface and how to set everything up and, uh, you know, what the orthographic view setup looks like. So I won't be covering that too much. Um, uh, I'll be referring to a, a few tools here and there, but uh, you know, just so you guys are aware, we have the. Uh, this is how Max usually comes in the install. Uh, this is all standard. So you have your top, front, and your left side view, and each one of these views you can click into and you can pan around using your. Uh, you click down in your mouse wheel, and you can see the grid there. And if you hold, if you type G, the G key, you can hide your grid in any one of the viewports. And um, if you click on the little plus sign, you can maximize the viewport or hit Alt W. So again, all of that stuff is covered in the beginner crash course. I'll leave a link in the description. So let's discuss some model, basic model primitives, right? So I'm going to go ahead and expand my perspective viewport. So in our side panel here, we have a bunch of different tabs here, and all of them do different things, right? So we have our create tab. We have our Modify tab, which we use to modify the geometry that we create. We have the Hierarchy tab, which we can use to adjust our pivot location, um, which makes it easier to manipulate objects and rotate around certain things and you know, whatever. We'll talk about that later. Um, 
you have your motion tab, which you can assign particular motion controllers and paths and stuff. Um, we'll cover that in, an, in another video specifically about animation basics. Um, we have our display tab, which is really helpful for hiding and revealing certain types of geometry and cameras and helpers and stuff. And we have our utilities tab, which we have like some basics utilities, which, which we'll, we'll cover later on in the video. So in our create tab, this is where we're going to be creating all of our geometry, right? You can create all sorts of stuff. You can create geometry, you can create uh, spline objects and shapes. Okay, lights, cameras, and helpers, uh, which we'll cover lights and cameras later on in the video. And we have uh, space warps, which is like things like forces and deflectors, things that you can use for simulations. And systems, which we'll uh, take a look at this as well later on. So let's go to the the, the, the geometry uh, tab here. And in our drop down list, you get a bunch of different geometry types that you can create. So in the standard primitives, this is the first drop down option here, you can create all kinds of different standard primitives, right? So the general philosophy of modeling things in 3D Studio Max and, you know, similar to other softwares like Cinema 4D and Blender and Maya and stuff, um, is that it's more of an additive approach um, versus a subtractive approach, right? What I mean by that is you start with like the, the fundamental like base geometry, the simple, most, most simplified version of uh, your asset that you can think of, and then you build onto that asset, right? You build more levels of detail onto it. Um, as opposed to uh, ZBrush or Mudbox, where you're subtracting um, material away from the object, uh, sort of like modeling clay, right? So in Max, uh, you know, a particular object like this, like a, um, you know, like this adorable little cat pencil case that my <laughs> girlfriend owns. So like, you, it's a, it's a very simple, it's a pretty simple object, but you know, it's made of multiple parts, right? You start thinking about this in a really you know, fundamental sense. Like this is made of a cylinder. There's some extrusions here to the cylinder. The top is a sphere that's maybe cut in half. The ears are maybe boxes that you can vertex weld um, some of the vertices together to create the little wedge shapes here. And uh, we got Buzz here. Buzz is a very complex shape. <laughs> he poops. That's very complex. Anyway, um, so stuff like that, like you have to start thinking about things in the real world, the things that you're actually going to model. Um, in like the most simplified terms possible, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll create a box, you know, simple box. And the some of the components, some of the, um, you know, primitive shapes have multiple operations for creating something. So if you drag in your scene and you can click and drag and you can create the base of the box first, right? So I'll create a box like right here. And then it does another operation where I'm not clicking anything. I'm just scrolling up and down. And I can click uh, click again to create the, the top of the box. And there we go. And then I can click um, anywhere uh, to, to complete the operation of the box. And then real quick, I covered this already in the um, beginner crash course guide. But Q, W, E, R are your translation tools, which are also up here. So um, Q is your selection tool. W is your move tool. E is your rotation tool and R is your scale. So those are just like really quick hotkeys that you could use to select things and move stuff around. Um, yeah. And down here is your like translation offset uh, parameters, your translation offset values. So you can, um, these are relative to the world space. So you can r right click on these to zero them out or you can you know drag in here and uh, type whatever you want and uh, your objects in the scene will move accordingly to those uh, values. So we got a cube in here, cool. And we can create all kinds of different stuff now that we know the basic operations. So it's kind of like easy to expect, you know, you click and drag, it creates the base and uh, you click again, cone has three operations. So pretty pretty self-explanatory. So I would suggest um, taking a minute and just, just create some stuff to see, see what this stuff does. And so what you could do is turn on auto grid here. And if you can, you know, you can go down and create a teapot or something. And what auto grid will do is automatically snap the um, XYZ plane to whatever face that you are um, currently hovering over to whatever object. So you can see the, the XYZ 
uh, gizmo there is changing depending on where I'm at. So you can go ahead and create all kinds of teapots everywhere. It's something I, similar that I explained in the crash course video, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and delete all this stuff. Uh, okay, so we covered, so you can play around with all these standard primitives. In the extended primitives, we have things like hedra, hedronal shapes. You have all kinds of different like chamfer boxes, which, you know, this could be useful for certain things. Um, but you can always create a, a regular box and then chamfer yourself later with a modifier. Um, so it's like if you're just looking for a quick chamfer box, like something like this is pretty, uh, it's an easy little tool built into Max. And if you want to see the little edge, the little edges, uh, when you're doing more precise modeling, you can go to edge faces and you can turn those on. Or you can turn on wireframe. And wireframe is really uh, great to, to use when you're trying to model um, like concave shapes, like shapes that have like uh, an inter, like an inner face, like inner faces to them. Let's say if you're going to model like a tunnel or something, um, or um, you know, like a uh, some kind of case, you know, like a, a box or something, and you want to be able to see what's inside the box. You have geometry like inside the box, or whatever. You want to be able to see that stuff, and you can turn on um, wireframe, and you can see inside of it. So very useful for all kinds of different modeling situations um, and you have all kinds of different stuff you have a hose you know um, again these shapes are, are really useful for like when you know exactly kind of like what you're gonna model um, if you're just gonna model something free form it's best to stick to stick with the standard primitives like the, the basic the most fundamental shape you possibly can to start with when modeling whatever you're trying to model right so we'll get into that in a little bit later on in the video. Compound objects are things like uh, blob mesh and Boolean objects. So, um, you know, real quick, the standard primitives will create a box. And we'll create a sphere. And we'll stick the sphere in the box. And just to uh, cover this real quick again, um, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, create a compound object pro boolean or you can use boolean um, pro boolean allows you to boolean multiple objects boolean is just a one-time operation so you can either union or subtract intersect merge attach or insert so go ahead and subtract so i have the box selected so i'm going to try to sub subtract the sphere from the box and uh, i'll go ahead and add operands and i'm going to choose the sphere and that will just remove a chunk out of this the, the, the box so really useful when you're uh, near the end of modeling something and you know you know that you want to remove um, one object from another. Um, it's a little difficult to um, to modify the topology of this box once you have this done. Um, you get some strange artifacts which we'll look uh, we'll look at later. So maybe I'll just go ahead and copy. You know, just move this over. And the basic copy and like instancing and referencing uh, operations. I'm not gonna be covering in this video. Um, again, I'm gonna assume that you watched the um, crash course video. So please refer to that for all the, uh, the basic like navigation and standard operations. Okay, so um, you guys can experiment with all of the rest of these, you know, different object types that you can create. There's a bunch of them, create stairs, you know, which are like really useful when you're doing like architectural scenes and stuff. Um, there's doors, there's all kinds of stuff in here. And of course I have a bunch of plugins. So this is where your, um, you know, objects for those particular plugins are gonna show up. Okay, so let's start taking a look at some of the typical modifiers that you'll probably be using the most frequently when modeling virtually anything using 3D Studio Max. So um, I got a, you know, simple cube and a, Geosphere set up in my scene, so we're going to toss on some modifiers on these guys and start looking at these. So, like I said, there's five basic modifiers. There's uh, the Edit Poly modifier, there's the Chamfer modifier, there's the Turbo Smooth and Mesh Smooth modifiers, um, there's the Normal modifier, and the Shell, right? So those five modifiers we're going to be taking a look at, and later on in the tutorial here, we're going to be 
creating uh, a little architectural scene using basically those five modifiers to create everything. So um, yeah, let's jump in. So I'll click on this cube here and in my little drop down here, obviously, you know, these are your standard parameters and you can change the size of this cube here, 30 by 30 by 30. And I can add edge segments if I want to, or I can do that using the edit poly modifier, which is what we're going to look at next. So in my drop down list here, let's scroll down to edit poly and pop that on. Edit poly modifier is definitely the number one most used modifier, uh, in my opinion. Um, well, that I use the most frequently, right? Um, it basically allows you to modify your geometry in any possible way that you can really think of. Um, so let's, uh, let's, you know, go through some of these, some of these options here, right? So um, in your selection drop down here, you have vert, the vertex mode, you have an edge mode, you have border, polygon, which is basically the faces of the object and the element, which is like the entire object itself. And sometimes objects are, you know, created out of multiple, um, you know, pieces of geometry, uh, which element mode comes in handy for selecting certain things, which we'll look at later. So in vertex mode, if I click on vertex, I can grab one, one of these and, you know, with your Q, W, E, R, you can um, move these around, you know, because basically it stretches the cube out. Um, I can, um, you know, basically if I wanted to create like a wedge shape, um, you know, I could um, do it a couple different ways. I could select these two vertices here and I can use the collapse tool and that'll collapse it down to a single point. Same thing here, collapse, you know, so that's pretty cool. And obviously being this is all parametric and the uh, modifier stack, I can, if I don't want that, I can right click and delete it. Uh, you know, being that I only did a couple operations, I'll just do a couple undos. Um, another way you can do that is if I wanted the wedge to be on a certain angle or something, um, I could use target weld. And I can select this vertice and I can weld it to this one. You basically, just click and drag. Cool. So I got like a nice little wedge shape going on there. And that's really helpful for modeling all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, if you just want to get rid of some vertices, uh, simplify your mesh. Um, when we go further on in the tutorial, when we model this chair, we model a little Eames chair, we're going to be, uh, you know, welding together some vertices to smooth out our mesh. It comes really in handy. Um, and then if I click, I'm going to go over to my geosphere here, I'll show you a couple other little tools for the vertex. So I toss in an edit poly on here, um, click on the vertex selection, I can select my vertex, and I can uh, grow my, my selection. So you can see the selection is growing outward. The little points are highlighting when I click grow. And that allows me to, you know, select multiple points in a given area. Um, alternatively, I can uh, select on a vertex and then use soft selection, which is really helpful for modeling organic shapes. And you can see that there's like this color gradient that shows up on the mesh wherever I select a particular vertice, vertex. Um, and I can adjust the fall off. You know, so I can kind of like uh, do it that way and then I can, you know, start to pull these out in like a really kind of a smooth way, you know, which is really pretty cool for modeling things like, I don't know, water droplets or rocks or what, whatever you could really think of, you know. Um, but it's not adding any geometry to it, it's just manipulating it, right? It's because you're editing the, you know. Uh, topology of the, the of, of the mesh itself. Okay, so back into our cube here, um, we'll look at a couple other operations. So um, in edge mode, I could select uh, you know certain edges, and I can uh, do things like um, I can connect edges. So I connect a couple edges there. Cool. And then I can also double click on any edge, or I can click on one edge and do a ring, and it'll select all of the edges that are coplanar to that edge or that are, um, you know, in the same XYZ uh, orientation as that edge. Um, I could do loop, which will loop around the object and it'll create a loop there. And then I can modify these edges like that. I could, you know, of course, double click on that edge and it'll select the whole ring, the whole loop. So that's cool. Um, And then a couple things in the uh, 
so there's all sorts of so there's all sorts of tools that you could use um, in the uh, edge mode. Um, so you know, feel free to explore these. There's there's all kinds of stuff in here, and then the polygon mode, um, which is used most frequently for modeling stuff. So you can use the extrude tool and basically hover over any face and kind of click and drag out, and you can extrude faces like that. Or you can um, you know select a face and click on the little settings and you get this little dialog box that pops up and you can control the amount of uh, um, extrusion more precisely. And you can also select multiple faces, of course, and you know extrude those out the, in the same way. Pretty neat. And then there's the inset tool, which I can select a face and kind of go like this and uh, click on the little inset settings and then I can inset the face inward like that and create another face and I can extrude that one in and make a little depression a little concave shape which that's very helpful um, and then there's also so let's say if I duplicate this box you know, rotate it 90 degrees or something you can turn on your angle snap toggle Rotate that 90 or, you know, just whatever you're doing, whatever you're modeling, right? And I want to connect these two shapes together. In your Edit Poly Modifier, you can attach a shape to this object. So you can go to Attach, and I'll attach this one. Cool. So now this is just one object. Now if I click on Edit Face, I can select any one of these faces. So it makes it one object, right? And let's say if I want to really connect these two objects together, what I can do is, um, you know, let's say if I want to connect this face to that face, I can select both of these faces and use the bridge tool right here. Bridge that, and that's it. And it creates a little bridge section across them. So I can grab all of these vertices and kind of move them around, do whatever I want. Now it is one solid mass, and uh, that becomes one shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and create another box. Or you know what I could do is I'll just grab this object here and I'll uh, drag, I'll drag in holding shift, shift drag, and uh, create a copy. And then in our modify tab, I'll go ahead and just right click and delete this edit poly modifier so we have our cube. Um, and then we'll toss on another edit poly. Actually, you know, what we'll do is um, I'll show you the chamfer modifier next. So the chamfer modifier is number two in our list here. So chamfer modifier will has a couple of different operations. One is the quad chamfer, which gives you a, another segment um, within the chamfer itself. And the standard chamfer just chamfers just the edges. Um, so you can adjust the amount that it chamfers. So if you want like a hard-edged chamfer like that, that's that's how you do that. Or if you you can add segments to give it a you know curved edge. So it's very similar to um, the chamfer box in our uh, earlier in the tutorial we looked at. Uh, but now you have full control over this box, um, you know, so you can increase or decrease the size and the length of the box and whatever. Um, you can add segments, and uh, the chamfer modifier, being it's a parametric modifier, will update your geometry accordingly. So set that back down to 30, so we have a perfect cube. Um, Cool. And if I want to uh, chamfer just one specific edge or a couple of edges or whatever, I could toss an edit poly modifier underneath the chamfer modifier, and I can select uh, particular edges. So say if I want just one edge, it just chamfers that one, or I could select you know three edges or something. So now just this edge, just this, just these edges in particular are being affected. I'll go ahead and copy this over again. I'll grab both of these modifiers and we can right click. Well, I'll grab just the, I'll just grab just the chamfer for now and I'll delete that one. Turn off our edge mode here. And now we'll look at the uh, turbo smooth modifier, which is something I use very frequently for modeling organic shapes. And I'll show you what that does. And I'll show you what the difference is between chamfer and using turbo smooth. So we'll toss on a turbo smooth modifier and I'll show what that does. Basically it kind of spherizes your geometry in a particular way. So it's kind of almost like a perfect sphere even though it's a little oblong. Um, so 
if we add segments to this in the Edit Poly, let's say if we go to our Edge tool and create a couple uh, loops, so cut, we'll go ahead and connect this. Maybe we'll just do two loops. I'll spread them out a little bit. Click OK. And, um, you know, we'll turn on our Turbo Smooth and see what that looks like. So it kind of gives us like this um, uh, cylindrical looking object, right? And I can continue to, I can turn that off and kind of continue working here. Um, you know, I'll connect these ones. And maybe connect this one too. All of these ones. Cool. And turn on Turbo Smooth. And it kind of gives us a similar look to the, uh, you know, to the, the, the chamfer, the chamfer box. Let's say if I just select all the edges there, yeah. So it's similar, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit less precise than the chamfer. However, it's good for modeling more organic looking shapes, like things like couch cushions and pillows and stuff like that. You wouldn't want to mod, you wouldn't want to um, create a box like this and chamfer it to make a, like a pillow. Um, it just it would just look odd because the surfaces are still very hard. Um, you know, using a, a smooth modifier allows you to um, have a bit of more of a give to it, a little bit more of a, a fluid, um, you know, organic approach to creating that kind of shape. And then in our edit poly, we can um, you know, turn this off, and I can go in the top view, and I can go ahead and like maybe select these vertices and move them around a little bit. Oops, yeah, select these. And we'll kind of see what that does. So I have, still have my vertices selected. If I turn on my Turbo Smooth again, I can, uh, you know, just kind of start to see how that is affected. So you could take it a step further. Let's say if you want to create like a little futon, like it's a little cube futon kind of thing, like a poof, right? You can uh, uh, use a couple different tools. You can either use the um, soft selection and select some of the top, uh, vertices or something and kind of like puff them out a little bit or you can use another modifier um, you could use the FFD um, 3 by 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 by 4 the, one of these guys here you grab one of these and basically it just creates a little cage around your object and you can uh, you know you can click on this cage or drop down and click on the control points and you can start to select some of these little control points um, and you can move them around and it kind of gives you like this pillow-like effect, you know. So that's pretty cool for mod uh, for creating really organic, like really still a pretty precise shapes. Okay, next modifier that we're going to look at is the normal modifier. So maybe I'll grab one of these boxes, copy it over. I'll delete everything, and maybe I'll scale this up to like uh, 60 by 60 by 60 or something. And I'll toss on another edit poly modifier. Maybe I'll select these three faces. I'll get rid of them. And let's say I want to create some kind of backdrop, right? A backdrop for a product or like, um, you know, like an animation or something. You just want to have like a flat backdrop with like, you know, a floor and walls or something. Um, uh, this it's, it's pretty simple to do that, right? So like um, rather than like creating separate you know, like a, you, can, you can always create a plane, right? And then you can create a box or something, and that'll be your, um, this will be your wall, this will be your floor or something, you know? A really simple way to do it is just to create a box, and then you can use the normal modifier to flip the normals, right? So these black faces are technically the back sides of the faces because all the faces in Max have one side, right? So these are your back facing faces. So those are, probably not going to render properly unless you have a double-sided material but it's in good practice to always just flip your normals and make sure whatever the camera sees is the front face of the object right or else you might start to get artifacts and stuff in your render so what you could do is toss on a normal modifier and that's automatically going to flip the normals right so you can choose to flip the normals and you can choose to unify the normals as well um, So you can go ahead and flip the normals there, and there you go. So now, like, whatever, so what we're currently seeing is the front face, right? So basically, you took what was inside the box, the inner faces, and you made them the outer faces that are, you know, that you can use as a backdrop now. 
So that's pretty easy to do when you're modeling, you know, an architectural scene or something uh, that has floors and walls and stuff. You can cre quickly create like a a box, uh, remove whatever faces you don't need, and uh, you know, do it that way, which is pretty cool. Another way you can use the normal modifier is, uh, let's say for instance, um, you know, I'll get rid of my old edit poly. So now we just have back faces on the outside, right? I can right click on this cube, object properties, and uh, I could ch choose back face cull. So now I see what's inside the box, right? And uh, the back faces are currently facing outward because we flipped the normals, um, but we're seeing inside the box now. So now um, if we stuck a camera inside of this box and a light, uh, it would look like sort of like an architectural scene, right? It would look like a little room. Um, so that's another way you can, uh, you know, use the, the power of, uh, of the normal modifier to, uh, to optimize your geometry, optimize your scene, um, so you don't have too many faces, right? Cool. And then the last modifier we're going to look at is the shell modifier. So let's say I want to, you know, copy this guy over, um, and I want to give, uh, let's say if, if I want to give these, uh, faces um, a thickness, right? What I could do is uh, drop down. It can even get rid of my normal modifier. We don't really need that anymore. Because um, what the shell modifier is going to do, toss on shell modifier, is give a thickness to these faces, right? So it basically allows us to extrude these faces out. And it's going to do it based on the normal um, outward facing vector direction um, of the of the face that is that's being extruded so that's why we get these strange little um, you know curved uh, or uh, uh, slanted surfaces here in this particular mesh but no worries we could always scroll down here at the bottom of the stack and you can see or at the bottom of the rollout and you can see straighten corners so I'll toss that guy on at the bottom there and that allows us to um, extrude out the faces and shell this shape uh, perfectly so let's say it's Kind of like a big cube now with a small chunk take, taken out of it. And I can extrude this one in two. Now, for fun, before we start modeling some, you know, architectural stuff and, you know, really getting into uh, how to model actual objects, right? Um, just for fun, I'm going to show you a couple fun things you could do with, um, you know, some of the uh, more advanced uh, uh, com compound objects. So, uh, you know, let's say uh, we're going to take a couple of geospheres, we'll copy them around, we'll scale them up a little bit, and we can link them together. Create like a little like molecule looking thing. What we're going to do is um, in our compound objects, we'll create a blob mesh, and I'll stick that somewhere in my scene. And under the modify tab here, um, I can pick whatever objects I want to add to the blob. And uh, basically what that's going to do is um, create one unified mass uh, for whatever uh, objects I feed it. So I can control the sort of like size of the little blob voxels um, that it's feeding. And I can adjust the tension. That's pretty cool. And what I can do is like, you know, vertex weld this, optimize it a little bit, kind of get rid of the floating vertices. And I can uh, maybe relax it, you can use a relax modifier, I'll kind of show you what that does. So all these modifiers do different things. I can crank that up a little bit. And if I turn off my edge faces, you can see how smooth that looks. So it's kind of like this clay blob ball looking thing. <laughs> So under my geospheres, if I, I can go back and I can select some of my geospheres and I can move these around and the blob mesh will update in real time. So this is pretty cool for doing like uh, close up shots of water droplets or something. Um, you know, if you use P flow or tie flow to create like a little, um, you know, particle simulation of rain or water or something, um, you can use a blob mesh uh, object like this or, you know, TIE flow has um, the TIE measure modifier 
that you can use, a time measure object that you can use to uh, to mesh your particles uh, as part of a simulation, which is pretty cool. So that's just another little tip that you could use to model like certain things. Uh, it's not useful for everything, but just kind of depends on what you're trying to make. Cool. Get rid of that. I'll turn on my edge faces again. And so those are the five uh, like fundamental modifiers that I use frequently. Edit poly, chamfer, turbo smooth, and mesh smooth are, you know, you could be used, you know, um, for similar situations. Um, the normal modifier and shell. Um, so we're going to be using all five of those modifiers to create some stuff. So uh, let me clear out my scene and we'll, uh, we'll get ready and we'll jump into uh, the rest of the tutorial. Okay. So I cleared up my scene, and before we jump into modeling things real quick, I just want to show you a couple examples of some architectural visualization stuff that I've done uh, recently and in the past. Um, so again, all of these m assets were modeled from very basic primitive shapes like we uh, looked at previously. Um, you know, you can get like a pretty fine amount of detail and resolution on the geometry itself and then take care of the rest with textures and correct lighting um, you know for so these scenes are are pretty minimal they're pretty they're pretty simple to build um, you know and uh, doing something like this of course the over the process of working with the client uh, to make these renderings uh, there's a lot of iteration involved um, however like if you set up your scene properly and you utilize you know the the, the most fundamental raw shapes you possibly can and make it you keep everything parametric um, where you have like a pretty uh, you know, efficient, non-destructive workflow with your geometry. Um, you know, you can make your life a whole lot easier uh, if you just know how to model things correctly. So these are just a couple images that I've done for a particular project that, uh, um, you know, the, the client itself was a um, uh, quartz and concrete manufacturer. So they did, they did like architectural uh, finishes. And this is another product shot for a leather company. Um, so they did custom leather um, upholstery and architectural details like wall panels and stuff. Um, so a um, bunch of details packed into these images. These are not the these are not the highest resolution images, but um, you know stuff like this is uh, uh, you know pretty pretty simple to to create all this geometry. So I just want to show you a couple examples of that kind of stuff. And of course on my website there's a bunch of um, architectural visualization projects that we've, we've done in the past as well. So feel free to pop over here and take a look. Okay, so back into Max, um, let's uh, let's start modeling some stuff. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling this like Eames chair. It's actually the exact same chair that I'm currently sitting on, um, and we're going to be doing a like a beer bottle and maybe some kind of table. I'm not, I don't really have a reference to the table. We're just going to kind of wing it for the table and see what happens. Um, so there's a couple different ways of modeling things in Max. There's a couple of different ways you could think about it. Um, one way is like once you get good enough. Um, well, I guess I mean if you're if you're just kind of cruising through modeling something, you could uh, model it, just kind of eyeball it, and have, find like a reference photo, and um, and have it like pulled up on the screen and kind of go back and forth and and model it. Um, sometimes you don't have like a direct reference to the drawings, and the client will like show you a picture of like, you know, I want this chair and you just can't find a reference to the chair or whatever that that happens pretty frequently. Um, and you kind of just have to wing it. You kind of have to just like, you know, make it match the proportions of a human scale. If it's a furniture piece or some kind of asset, like an object or uh, accoutrement in the scene or something, you know, like a particular vase or whatever. And sometimes you just kind of have to wing it. But sometimes you have reference photos like these. These are pretty good reference photos. Um, they're not orthographic. They're not particular you know, like perfectly straight on as far as the camera shot is concerned. Uh, but they'll work for us, so we'll, we'll bring them into our scene. So first thing we're going to do is, um, here are standard primitives. Uh, we'll go in our front view, and we'll just create a plane. And I'm not really going to concern myself with the scale of it. For now, we can always scale our um, object later. And what I can do is, uh, instead of wireframe, I'm going to call default shading. And um, what I might do is uh, in our hierarchy, effect pivot only, and I'm going to turn on our snaps. And you can right click on that 
and go to um, endpoint. Just make sure endpoint is selected. That's good enough. And we'll grab our gizmo here and we'll just put it in the corner there. That way we could just center this out. It's not really important. I just wanted to show you that you can do that. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and uh, just remove all the segments of this plane. And this is just going to be the backdrop. This is going to be like what we're going to be um, using to check uh, for our reference. So for like a material here, we'll just uh, name this chair. Uh, chair background. And a diffuse panel. Again, to pull up materials, you can click this little material editor here or type M. It'll bring that up. So our material, our diffuse channel, I'll click on this little box there. I'll choose bitmap. And we'll go ahead and choose our uh, Eames chair, which you could use any chair. I just pulled that chair picture off of uh, Google, you know, Google search. I just did uh, like a, a basic Eames chair. Um, and we'll uh, apply that material. You know, you can either drag and drop this this the little sphere here onto your scene, and uh, it's shaded. Or with your plane selected, you can hit this little assign material to selection button. Okay, we don't need this for now, so we'll close that out. And you can tell that um, the chair is a little bit uh, stretched. So we'll, what we could do is maybe just even stretch this. I'll turn off my toggle snaps, and we'll kind of scale that. And that looks pretty good. And maybe for human scale, what we could do is uh, in our Create tab, under Systems, go to Biped. And we could just stick a biped in our scene. And uh, we won't worry about the scale for right now. I just want to like maybe use that for reference later for the scale of this chair. Um, and you know what we'll do is we'll put him on another layer. Name it Dude. I'll hide him for now. I don't need need him for right now as we're as we're modeling stuff. Um, okay, so with this chair, um, actually, I'll I'll show you what the chair looks like. <laughs> this is the chair, right? So basically, it's a flat surface um, that's you know kind of concave and um, and has a uh, you know some geometric um, you know complexity to it. So. Um, how would we go about modeling this chair? Well, there's a couple different ways. First way is, um, you know, you could like create a box and then start extruding stuff out and try to like modify the box as best you can or whatever. Uh, but we're going to do it with a plane, which is a simple plane. So I'm just going to create a plane in plan view. Just kind of like, and you know what, I'm going to set up my layer here. I'll call this chair. Set that to current with a little highlighted blue stack there and I'm gonna create a plane and I'll stick it somewhere in my scene say about there okay and I'll turn on edge faces so we can see the edge there and I'll kind of just line it up and I'll, again this this is not a perfectly orthographic image so it's it's not uh, going to be a perfect reference, but it's something to get us started. And eventually we'll kind of just move it out of the way and and work at it in a free, free form way. So I got my plane set up here and I'm going to go ahead and toss an edit poly modifier like we worked with before. I'll turn on edge faces. I'll grab that edge and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag that edge up. Okay. And that's pretty much going to be the back of it, back of the chair, right? And the chair obviously isn't perfectly, you know, 90 degrees or anything. So I'm going to angle it back a little bit like that. And all that stuff we can adjust later. I'm going to go ahead and pull my chair out a little bit. And now we can start modifying this little flat plane here and uh, giving it a little bit of definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss on another edit poly. So that way we can always come, come back to this in case we mess up or we want to change something with the base mesh. So I'll toss in another edit poly. And then what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I'm going to go in here and select the uh, three uh, edges here and I'll do a connect. 
and I'm going to connect it like three times. I think that'd be good enough. And the same thing for these, for this one. Okay, and I'm going to uh, select these edges here. Actually, you know what? Okay, so I'm going to toss on another edit poly modifier on this uh, object just so we can come back to this in case we either mess up or we want to modify the base mesh later or something. Um, so we can do things in a procedural way like this. So uh, I'm going to go to our edge tool here, our edge selection, select all these, these three edges, and I'm going to connect them. I'll just connect them twice. Again, just keep it as simple as possible at, at first. Same thing here, I'm going to connect these ones twice and I'll connect these ones twice as well. Cool. So that gives us something to work with. Okay. And then what we can do is, um, you know, we can start to, we can start modifying this a little bit. Maybe push these down. You know, grab the, uh, the edges here. Maybe like, uh, you know, modify this one a little bit. Comes up like that, you know. Push this one down a little bit. Push these two back a little bit. Go in our side view. Start to like um, adjust the definition of the chair a little bit. Okay. And what I might do is, um, select my um, vertexes, vertices here. I might grab these four vertices and I might do like a, okay, so we got a little bit of definition going on there, which is pretty cool. And what I might do is, um, Select the vertices here, vertices tool, and I'll cut from here to here. Okay, and I'll do another cut maybe from here to here. Okay, and I'll cut these two butt down here as well. Again, always just keeping in mind you want to maintain the simplest version of the. Uh, object that you're trying to model. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these faces because they're no longer needed. Okay. And then I can start manipulating the chair a little bit to kind of match the overall profile of the chair. So what I can do is right click on the chair, object properties, and I'll go see through. So we can kind of see the chair a little bit more. And what I could do is like start shrinking the stuff up. So I can shrink these in a little bit. Grab these ones and shrink them in. You know. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be convincing, you know. And there's an, there's another way you could do this. You could use the symmetry modifier, which we'll take a look at in a minute here. Um, she could help you be a little bit more precise with some of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to grab these two vertices as well and uh, maybe just adjust them a little bit to so kind of give a little bit more definition to the sides there. That's yeah, looking pretty good. It's looking like it might work. Yeah. Okay, so from here we could toss on a turbo. Well, we can go ahead and right click and make this not see through again. And we can uh, toss on a terrible smooth modifier and start to see how this is looking. It's starting to look pretty clean. We've got, uh, got an issue here. Let's go and check this vertice, vertex, I mean. 
Okay, so this vertex is not welded for whatever reason it didn't weld properly. So I'm going to grab uh, just uh, control or sorry, I'll uh, fence select the, those vertices because there's two there that weren't uh, connected, and I'll just collapse those. And then if we turn on our Turbo Smooth again, that should be nice and clean, nice and cleaned up for us. So that's looking pretty good. There's might be a little bit more definition to the top there, to the top edges, um, and maybe the bottom as well. So we can uh, maybe modify this a little bit, maybe add a couple more segments. What we can do is um, we can cut this again. Maybe we'll cut it to the edges there. And what we could do is um, turn on our snaps and go uh, midpoint. Actually, that's what I should have done before. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Let's do it the right way. So in our angle snaps, we'll make sure midpoint and endpoint are selected. And go to cut. I cut from this vertex to the midpoint of that face. Again, this vertex to the midpoint of that face. Yep. And we'll do the same thing up here. Maybe for like uh, right here or something. And we'll kind of mess around with this a little bit. So cut midpoint to the face right there. Same thing here. Cool. So I'll turn off my snap toggle. We don't need those. And I'll go back in this view and then kind of modify this just a little bit. Can you just give it a little bit more definition up there? And same thing down here. Kind of push this forward a little bit. And grab these guys. Just want to make sure all this stuff makes sense. Cool. So that should give us a pretty decent base to work from for this chair. We can always modify it a little bit as we go. Um, but that's uh, that's looking like it might be pretty good in our Turbo Smooth here. So that's given us a pretty decent resolution. It feels like it's pretty natural with this chair that I'm currently sitting on. I mean, obviously, you're not going to probably have a direct reference to the physical object in your um, in your real world environment right but um, you know just from photographs if you do if I did have like a side view of this photograph um, it'd be definitely more helpful I can match it up just like we did with the back view like that or with the front view uh, but I don't so we're just gonna have to kind of go wing it a little bit so I can go back through and I can grab these vertices turn on my turbo smooth again and I can kind of just modify this stuff until it makes sense you know and I'm going to assume the uh, bottom is pretty accurate, so I'm just going to kind of leave it at this for now. Okay, I did. I was able to find a side view of this chair, which is looking pretty close to what we have, um, but maybe we can add a little bit more curvy definition to it, to our chair. So. Because uh, right now it's looking pretty flat up top. So what I might do is um, we can add some edge loops. So I'll toss in another edit poly modifier here. And maybe uh, I'll grab this edge and we'll do loop. We'll do a ring. ring and I'll go ahead and select oops fence select these vertices and we're going to try to connect these ones and we'll just connect it once and just by looking at that photo that should probably work maybe we'll um, oops, put about there And so for the most part, these faces are going to be pulled out a little bit. 
to give it a little bit more definition up top. Along with this one. Go ahead and modify some of these vertices to kind of match what we're doing. I'll grab some of these ones up here and I'll pull them back. Kind of give that back curving definition there. Okay, now we have our base mesh kind of uh, looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to leave that turbo smooth on, and I think what we'll do is um, Okay, now that we have our base mess sort of set up, I mean, there's a few tweaks you could probably make to it here, you know, to kind of get it to have a little bit more um, curvy appeal. Um, we can come back and modify this stuff a little bit later on. So now we have this kind of started. What I'll do is, um, you know, I'll keep my Turbo Smooth modifier. Well, I'll before we turn that on, I'll toss, maybe I'll toss in another Adipoly here. And I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to grab the entire ring of uh, uh, edges around the entire chair. So I could double click on that and grab the whole thing. And what I'm going to do is uh, there is a bit of a lip to these chairs. Um, you, know, you can kind of tell in some of these, they kind of go backwards a little bit. So what I'm going to do is kind of replicate that just by pulling some of the vertices out, or sorry, pulling some of the surfaces out. So I'm going to just like uh, hold uh, shift and drag those out and make a copy of them. And I might uh, scale them up a little bit, and I'll just kind of like pull them down. Okay, so now that I've kind of stretched these out a little bit, um, you know, we're going to toss on a turbo smooth and see how that's starting to look. So that's looking pretty convincing. We have a little lip on the edge there. I could probably tweak it a little bit more and make it a little bit more like realistic. Because at the top, you don't really see the not really supposed to see that uh, overlap, but on the bottom, it's definitely definitely getting there. That's definitely what we want to have happen on the bottom there. So I'll turn my Turbo Smooth off for now. And what I might do is just deselect maybe like these faces. And I'll kind of just like angle these ones up a little bit just to give like a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a, 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 a ledge there. Um, let's see how that looks. Pull it back a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, for for the sake of this tutorial, um, we're getting we'll get it as close as we can. But uh, you know, in reality, it's uh, um, you know, it's it's going to take a bit more tweaking if I were to do this for real. Um, okay, cool. And get a little tiny bit more definition there. Yeah. All right, great. So now we have that set up. We will uh, go ahead and uh, underneath our Turbo Smooth, we'll add a shell modifier to give it a thickness. That's too much thickness. <laughs> and maybe we'll just do the outer or, yeah, we'll do the outer amount. So you see what's happening there? Give it a little bit of a thickness there, so maybe we'll do like, a, I don't know, almost a centimeter. That'd be pretty pretty realistic. So that's good. Now with our turbo smooth at the top of the stack, we could always add more iterations, make it nice and smooth. So we turn off our edge faces, and we go. Got a perfectly little Eames chair base. Pretty easy, right?
just modeled from the from a single sil from a single plane. Okay, now from here, what we could do uh, is we're gonna start taking a look at the legs. So we'll quickly model the legs. We're not gonna model all the little details. Um, now that you guys are pretty familiar with the method of doing that, um, you, know, you guys can fill in the little details, but I'll just model the legs. I'll show you how that's done. So we go on the top view, create a cylinder. Maybe we'll have the cylinder come from somewhere about here and we'll kind of just drop that down. What I'm gonna do is uh, maybe set the segments to like 10 Remove the height segments, and we'll kind of just like yeah, just pull this down a little bit. Okay. I'll go ahead. Oops. Go ahead and angle about 15 degrees would do it, and I'll adjust my height to be about there. Pull our seat down a little bit. Okay. So that's pretty good. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll toss in a uh, edit poly modifier. I guess before we do this, we'll, um, we'll kind of angle this um, in this direction as well. So let's say, for instance, it's uh, maybe a 45 degree angle or something. And these don't really stick too far out from the uh, underside of the chair. So about there would do it. And all right, I'll probably grab the edges and I'll go uh, connect. Create one edge loop in the middle. And then what we'll do is uh, I'll grab, I'll just do control A and then hold alt and deselect the center spheres. And I'll kind of just like scale these down a little bit. I can grab the center and scale that up a little bit so that you can see the tapering that happening there. Cool. And then from here, what we could do is I'll toss in another add a poly modifier. Grab my vertices. I'll select these ones and um, and we can select these ones as well. And we can align them on the Z. Oops, I mean. What I could do is grab these vertices here, the top and bottom. And then go my top view and I can go uh, view align. What that's going to do is that's going to flat. Okay, so I can grab my bottom vertices here and I can go. Um, there's a couple different ways you can align it to like make the uh, vertices flat all on the same plane. Um, so I don't know, the quickest way to do it is from here, we'll just do a grid align and that'll just align it to the grid. So you can tell it's nice and perfectly flat. That works. And then maybe these ones so will, uh, you know, go up in the top view and go view align and that'll just align those to the, make planar to that particular view at the top. Cool. Go ahead and turn on our edge faces again. And in the same edit poly, we'll go edge and I'll put in an edge loop here. We'll just connect this and I'll, uh, oops, drag this up. Kind of put the edge loop right at the top there. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, we'll, we'll do the bottom one first. To connect. And uh, we'll put the edge of pretty close to the bottom there. Nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and clone as a copy. And we're going to make the top cap. So we'll grab this and we'll connect these. And we're going to make the cap as a separate element. So maybe all out there would be good. And I'll grab my faces and just select all the faces besides the top cap and just delete those. That'll leave us with this little cap at the top. And in our hierarchy tab, I can go effect pivot only, center to object, and I can reset the transform. Cool. And then from here, what I could do is do a little shell modifier. 
and it'll give me the little top cap. Turn off straight corners. And there you go, you got a perfect little cap there. And you can like, you know, fiddle around with this and adjust it as you uh, as you need to. You know, maybe have it make it go all the way up into the chair. So in our edit poly, we can turn off our shelf for now. We can grab the top face and go local. And we can pull that up and adjust it as we need to. So now on these chairs itself, on these chairs in real life, there is a uh, piece of metal that actually connects to the base of the chair and uh, it curves up and does this little curve thing. So if we have time, we'll uh, fill in that detail later on. But we're getting pretty close to finalizing our chair here or the, with a leg. So what I'll do is I'll toss on a Turbo Smooth modifier and we'll basically be done with this leg and we'll copy it around. So I'll toss on a Turbo Smooth. Oops, one thing I forgot to do is uh, I forgot to put an edge loop at the top there. So go ahead and connect. That should be good. Perfect. Now we got a pretty nice looking, um, you know, bottom here. And we can always come back and adjust that later to make it a little bit more clean. But depending on the scale of your, or depending on the proximity of your camera to this object, you might not see all those details. So I could do is just move this down a little bit. Take my chair leg and I'll group that. And we can uh, copy this over as an instance. And I'll go ahead and mirror that in the x axis. Kind of just put it over here. I'll do the same thing for the back legs instance. And we'll copy it and mirror it on the y axis. I'll put about there for now and see how it looks. Cool. It's looking like it's almost there. Obviously, like these these parts um, would have to be extruded down a little bit. We'd have to model these little metal components and stuff to enhance the realism a little bit. So. After we turbo smooth this, we could uh, maybe reduce the iterations to one. Okay, and my mic cut out for a few minutes there, so uh, we'll pick up. Um, so we finished up with the chair. Um, so I'm just going to move this over to the side here. We'll uh, take a look at that a little bit later on. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, create our table. And I think what I'm going to do with the table is just something simple. Um, so in our extended primitives, I'm just going to create a hedra. Oh, and I'll stick this on uh, my zero layer here. Create something like that. I'm gonna move this up, and we'll toss on an edit poly modifier on that guy. Select polygons. I'm just gonna select all the polygons, and we'll do an extrude by polygon, and I'll just extrude all the faces out like that. I kind of see how that's starting to look, and that looks pretty good. Something like that. And then what I could do is maybe scale all these faces inward. Like that. 
and then I'll grab my vertex vertices, grab the top and the bottom vertices, and I'll just align this to the Z plane. Oops, I'll do one at a time here. Align those to the Z plane, align these to the Z plane. Cool. And then there is some overlapping going on. So I'm going to grab my the inner vertices there, the inner facing vertices of this little table leg setup thing. Some kind of space age looking design. I'm not really sure what the point is here, but you know, hey, it's a, it's going to be a table. It's going to look great. Got to have faith in your own creations. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to scale those in a little bit so, so they make them kind of like planar. About there looks pretty good. All right, I'll just kind of move this down a little bit. Awesome. And I'll turn this 45 degrees, the top view. And we'll go ahead and create like a spline, create a rectangle. And I'll just stick the tabletop in here like this. Yeah. I'll uh, disable, enable in render and viewport. And then we'll grab both of these and I'm just going to zero these out. Like that. And then I'll move this up into place. Something like that should be good. And then in the rectangle, um, you know, we could do this a couple different ways to add maybe like a corner radius. So I can add I can add the corner radius here like that. So it gives me like a little bit of a radius there. Or if I wanted to have a little bit more detailed control, I can right click with the rectangle selected. Right click and go to convert editable spline. And then I can grab my vertices and just grab all of them. And then I can scroll down here and under fillet, I can just add a little bit of a fillet to that. So it's the same thing as the corner radius and the uh, rectangle tool, but we just have a little bit more control over the individual ver vertices. So that's cool. And then we'll just uh, add a shell. Mm, yeah, looks pretty good. Okay. So we got our table, we got our chair, and then now we'll do like a bottle. We'll do like a bottle of beer. How about that? So I already have this plane set up here. Um, so we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll trace this. Oops. Um, cool. That's default shading. And move this up just a little bit here. Okay. And then uh, the way we're going to do a bottle it's the bottles and vases and stuff like that it's, it's pretty simple um, we're just going to create the profile of the uh, object itself and then we're going to use the lathe modifier to basically revolve the profile around and make our object pretty pretty easily so we'll just go ahead and uh, do corner and corner and we'll add in some fillets later so i'm saying the middle of the bottle is about there so if i hold shift it'll snap to the uh you know the x and y you know, this will be pretty simple. So we'll just go, I'll just drag this up like that. And we'll add one here. And we'll add one there. And, uh, you know, just create this as simple as possible. You know, give it a little bit of a lip there. And maybe another one here. Cool. And then what I could do is I could just get rid of this guy for now. I could turn off my grid by hitting G, and I can just go in here and kind of like fiddle around with the um, turn on my selection tool, the vertex mode, with the uh, filleting, so I can fill in some of these edges. So I can grab my fillet tool and I can just kind of draw in some fillets. Grab both of these and fill it that like that. Same thing here, maybe. That should be good. And then what we're going to have to do is, um, you know, with our vertex mode selected, we, we want to get rid of some of these, um, you know, overlapping vertices. There's there's a way you can um, auto weld those, but sometimes it doesn't really work. So the best way to do it is to just do fuse and weld. And that will basically take that vertice and make it one vertex. So 
I'm going to do the same thing here, fuse, weld. So there's a couple of those locations. I think we got just the two that were important here. Uh, okay, cool. And now that we have our profile done, what I'm going to do is we're going to have to do this anyway. Um, in our hierarchy, effect pivot only. And we're going to move this, uh, turn on our snaps, make sure endpoint is selected. And I'm just going to move that and stick that at the bottom of the profile. Cool. And then now the fun part is we'll just go ahead and toss on a lathe modifier. And instant bottle. There you go. Done. And of course you can go back and you can modify this stuff like if the, you don't want the mouth that uh, shallow. Just grab this and kind of like pull this back a little bit. There you go. Nice. And then for rendering purposes, being that the inside faces are still back faced, what we could do is we could shell this. And give it a, like a little bit of a thickness there. Something like that might be cool. Nice. Easy bottle. Yep. I could scale this down. Give it a different color maybe. Put this on top of our table. Cool. Nice. So we have all our components done. One more thing we could do is, you know, there's a variation of this chair that's like more of a wireframe. So maybe we can like modify the. Uh, just so you guys are aware of this is of possibility. Um, turn on my edge faces. If I open up this group, I can select this surface here. And with the uh, turbo suit selected, I'll go ahead and delete the shell because we're not going to need that. And we'll go ahead and make the wireframe version of this chair seat. So um, I'll go edit poly. In our edge mode, I'll just select all the edges. And I can use this create shape tool. And that's going to do is basically create splines out of the, uh, out of the uh, edges of that object. So now what I could do is I could just delete the original mesh and I'm left with the edges that we just created. I can enable these in viewport and render and I can scale them down a little bit. Neat. So now we have like the wireframe version. So if your client wanted that version, there you go. Pretty simple. What I can do is um, close this group. I can select that and I can go attach to group. I can select that group and there you go. Sweet. Okay, so we'll go ahead and rotate this maybe and kind of like set up a little set up a little scene. You know, I'll stick it stick this guy here or something. Nice. And I already set up a little camera. Kind of start to see how that's looking. So that's looking pretty cool, right? So in a future tutorial. I'm going to do a, um, you know, basic lighting and camera setup and stuff like that uh, for, you know, photorealistic rendering. And we'll apply some materials maybe to this scene, maybe to something else. Uh, we might as well continue with this scene. Now we have it, you know, pretty go looking pretty good so far. Um, maybe we'll add a little bit more detail to these chairs and stuff. But, um, you know, otherwise it's just uh, looking pretty good. We can add like maybe a vase or the flower and a book or something here or you know, pair of eyeglasses or something, you know, just some stuff to spice up the scene a little bit. And then maybe like in the background, we could do, uh, you know, some wood flooring and the, uh, like a, you know, plaster wall or whatever and have some light shining in and make the scene look uh, pretty realistic. So it's, it's already getting there. Um, one last thing I already have, I set up my dude, the little biped guy. And what you could do here is, um, wireframe. I'll just grab the little pivot there and Maybe move him into place a little bit more. There you go. Neat. So, I mean, this this is pretty simple to kind of, you know, model the biped and do whatever you want with them. Um, in the uh, future video, I'm going to do a basics of animation. Um, so we're going to be covering what you could do with the biped, adding some animation to them, and of course, a bunch of other, you know, animation concepts that you could do with Max, which is pretty fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, so that, that's basically the, the extent of this uh, 3D modeling uh, tutorial.
tutorial. Um, so I hope you guys like learned something about the, like the fundamentals of modeling just basic geometry from photographs or from just objects that you have around your, your house or, or um, you know, just stuff from like how to model stuff from reference. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, interested to hear your thoughts on this. And um, if you like the tutorial, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Uh, coming up in this uh, sort of like intro level uh, series that I'm doing here. Um, again, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>